Hello ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here, and welcome back to Star Drive 2. We're gonna be doing a, another kind of preview video, and I wanna talk to you guys about some new stuff that's been announced for this title, which, as of recording this, actually comes out in like two days. So, let's go ahead and load up my campaign, my ongoing campaign. I plan on doing a let's play of this, because I'm having so much fun with it, after release. Uh, I want the dev to have all the opportunity in the world to, uh, you know, continue to balance and fix some bugs. I've been seeing updates on Steam like every single day. Like he's just knocking out new content for it and balancing stuff. Uh, I know there was one update that he put out where like the AI got stupid hard and kicked the crap out of me on normal. I think it's been rebalanced since then because of last night I was playing and had some a real fun. Like this is the match from last night, uh, and some random cool stuff happened, but. If you don't know, Star Drive 2 is a 4X strategy game. It is turn-based on the big map, where you can hold down space bar and it simulates real time. It goes naturally, and we'll do it real quick. It naturally goes through turns, like we're doing it right now, where it simulates real time. You see the ships moving and everything. Uh-oh, are you enemy? Or did I end the war with you? I think I ended the war with these guys. Okay, should be all right. Or I could totally be wrong, and they might be coming in to kick the crap out of me. Oh, they're gonna colonize my planet. Get out of here. Oh, is this a colony ship? It is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so this one, I don't know how many turns I'm in. It's maybe, I don't know, 60 turns? Is that what that is? Or 600 turns, possibly? Turns go really, really quickly in this. So one of the reasons why I like it so much. So to give you an idea of how this game plays out right now, I am playing as the United Federation, and my empire name is right here, and that's because I've got... I'm all spread all over the place. Like, this purple area isn't me. I'm the blue area here. So I started off in the soul system, of course. I'm playing as the humans. Uh, I, I've customized the race a little bit. I've changed some of their stats around, because you can actually do that. Uh, but I started off on Earth. We'll zoom in on Earth here. I love the art style on this. Keep in mind, this game is being developed, I think, by two guys. I think it's an art, uh, one of his art team member, and then um, Zero himself is making it. So... It's really impressive for the small team, and it's probably the fun, the most fun I've had in a Forks game in years. All right, so here's Earth. You can see I've got all these upgrades that I've researched and put time into and building and, and investing in. Notice my population, like these are my people that live on Earth. Only two of my farmers are human and the rest are from other races. That's because, and this is a really cool, a system that I've been messing around with. If I contact uh, the, the Shogunate, here, the bear samurais. Let's discuss. I can do a treaty, I can do a foreign exchange, and what that does is it allows um, some of my people to be exchanged for th some of theirs. And it just increases the way much, much they like me, that increases our tolerance so we can make bigger deals. Uh, it's it's pretty cool, actually. And it actually shows, like, it's not just, oh, well, there's some, some numbers going on in the background. No, no, they're actually there. You see them on your planet. And you can move these guys around. The first one's uh, food production, the middle one is uh, general production, the ability to make goods to make money and then the third one is our research our scientists like look at i'll move them around they change how they look that is a bear scientist thumbs up for bear scientist right so all right as the all right, planet's fine plenty of food so as i started this match and I, I colonized my first uh solar system you know out in the world i took over this uh asteroid belt which has got a really low population but has a really high production output that means it's really good at constructing things i've been producing ships out there uh mid-range through the game, this wormhole opened up in the Sol system, like a random event, and this changed how the game ran for me. Like, this changed how the entire campaign was going compared to every other campaign I've had, because it went way out here to System Zero. System Zero was colonized by this robotic bug race that decided that I was in the way and I needed to go. Like, I, I knew their race existed for about two turns before they had an army from their home world, which is, uh, I think it was one right here. That's what they named it, Zero, One. Yeah, you see what they did there? They, um, they jumped through the wormhole the second it was established and invaded Earth. Now, my fleet at the time had been scouting way up here at uh, Mirami. So my, my fleet was way out here somewhere. It was dealing with an event that was going on with this ship that was covered in bugs. And I... I I had Earth under attack. The space station that I had there was destroyed. The uh, the defense fleet that I had, which was like one ship, was wiped out. And so what I ended up doing was this, like, 
I, I, I flew my fleet around and I flanked them and I got through the wormhole and I started taking out their outposts and killing their resources while they were blockading Earth trying to take it from me and they tried to invade with ground troops but my troops held off and if you haven't watched my first preview of this, the ground troop battles are these turn-based kind of like chess-like games. Pretty legit, right? I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but this is what makes this game a lot of fun. I just gotta, want you guys to understand this. Um, I ended up taking out that entire species. I took their main planet. I invaded with, you know, Marines, with ground troops. Uh, I took these two planets. They had one last system left. They owned this one planet right here. And instead of taking the planet over, I, uh, I let them starve. They didn't have the food production to keep themselves alive. And by the time I got over here, the, the planet was like a husk, and then I invaded. And I still have some of their people, so I didn't absolutely like remove them from the universe. They're still around, the robot race, the robot bug race. I just use them as workers now. Um, because what's neat about these guys, since they're robots, they're... Let me see if it still says it. All right, so it says content. When I first got here, it was like robotic indifference to me. They didn't, even though I had conquered them, they didn't care because they're robots. They're just like, whatever. Okay, we'll, we'll do the same work we were doing, but we'll just do it for you. We don't care. So I thought that was like a neat twist. So what I wanted to make this video about though, and we're gonna go ahead and start a fight so you guys can see how the combat works. Uh, I do have battleships now for the first time. Where's my primary fleet? Oh, it's way out here. Interesting. Let's get you dispatched to the main fleet. Move the Normandy. My Normandy's my big ships that I've been messing around with. Recruiting stations open on Earth. These are the random events that pop up. With so many capital ships being built on Earth, we had we had been having trouble finding qualified recruits to man our ships. As a result, the Admiralty have now established a recruiting station on Earth. Our recruiters will utilize a wide array of persuasive techniques ranging from basic incentivizing through advanced psychological manipulation. That's messed up. To see our fleet quotas are met, it's Goon Swarm. If you're an EVE player, you know what's going on. They're in a bunch of games, but EVE's the one I always think of. It's the Goon Swarm symbol. <laughs> Maybe the next batch of recruits will actually know how to aim our laser cannons. Let's get a fight started. Really? We've got another Normandy? Get your asses over here. Let's get into the fleet and we'll go start some stuff. Oh, cool. We just destroyed. We are at war with them still. Fantastic. That's going to make this a lot, a lot easier on us. Oh, now the AI's yapping at us. Uh, we propose a bargain between our people. No, we don't care. Deal with that later. So the reason I wanted to make this video though, oh, they've got a fleet right here. We can start some shit. This is gonna be great. The reason why I wanna make this video though is because modding support has been announced. Full Steam support, fantastic. We took out another freighter of theirs, probably trying to uh, feed one of their planets out here. I'm not letting them get food to these planets, blockading them. Oh my God, do they ever outnumber us? We're probably gonna lose this. Wow, let's fight it. But modding support has been announced, and not only did he announce it, the, the dev Zero actually did a guide video on how to mod and bring your ships in, and it's incredibly simple uh, compared to most engines. Most, oh my goodness, look at their fleet. I think we're slightly outnumbered. Like, what do they have? What, what do you have aboard you? Okay, so you guys are basic lasers and rocket turrets. It's a lot of firepower on those little ships, and then the big ships are, Energy weapons, you don't say, and high-tech steel plating, and lots and lots of carriers. They've changed. The last time they brought a fleet in, they had this, like, focus on rocket power, and now it seems like it's all energy weapons. Oh, boy. Oh, there's the rocket power. These are long-range missiles. Now, I do have... I have an interesting setup myself. This is actually a new setup. I've had, this is an untested design. The Normandy has that. A gigantic cannon aboard her. And then she's got some flat cannons and some light laser weaponry and some point defenses. And she's also got heavy shields. So at range, we have a lot of stopping power. This is my um, Arizona class. She's got a uh, hangar base for fighters. And then she's got two rail cannons on the front. Very powerful long range weapons. So, and lots of anti fighter, anti missile support. Will it be enough in this battle? I don't know. Let's begin and we'll find out while I yap about the, uh, the upcoming. There's the rounds from the rail cannons. The big cannons have not yet fired. What's your range? Let's increase your range. You're supposed to be super good at, at long range. So we'll put you there. We'll put you at engagement range. There we go. Oh, it just, it shoots green stuff. Weird. Here they come. Look at all the fighters that they've launched. Now these rail guns, they're, they're slow rounds, but they do a lot of damage and they can't be stopped. 
Not like missiles can, even though you're going to see the, all these missiles that they start launching as soon as they have the opportunity. Let's take out some of the support ships. Let's don't let these support ships get within range. I would really appreciate that. Let's also launch our fighters. But the, the video that he put out was how to mod, how to add your own ships in. Very cool idea. He added in the galaxy class from Star Wars. Or Star Trek, excuse me. Oh, I'm going to get hung for that one. You're going to be like, Shaq, what's wrong with you? All right, you guys are on point defense. Stay here and defend our, our main battery. All right, here comes the missiles. The missile launchers are in range. Doing some decent damage. Hopefully the flak will be able to take care of it. And we got the flak turrets firing off. I love this because you can actually see the subsystems and what damage they're taking. I've got a lot of power on these and a lot of shielding. So hopefully the shields will hold. Oh god, here goes the flak. Oh, they're going after my fighters. Fantastic. So he put in the galaxy class and he put in, I think it was a, t a Katinga. Oh, flak, flak, flak. There's the flak taking them out. All right, we got light impacts on the shields. Let's move you up. Let's move you over to defend against the flak. We need those flat cannons online. Keep firing. We got to take these ships out. We need those. Oh, look at the energy weapons. Oh, no. What the hell am I going to do against those? I am not set up to fight energy weapons. I was actually set up to fight nothing but uh, missiles. That's what they've been using. Overload our shields. Since last time you guys saw me play this, the, um, the ships have now have abilities that you can kick off based on what modules you have installed. Oh, they've got a lot of fighters coming in. Come on, we've almost got one of their cap ships down, and look at this. We're starting to do subsystem damage. We've taken out their entire forward weapons. We've taken out their... Yep, nope, she's gone. We hit their ammo boxes. I don't know if the ammo boxes do area of effect damage. I hope they do. Oh, we've almost taken out her. Let's take that out. All cannons, focus fire. We're not going to try to evade. We're just going to try to do as much damage as possible. But yeah, and then he's given the tools for modding over to the guy... Um, What's his name? Uh, McShooty. He made a total conversion for Star Drive 1 uh, it, that turned it into the, a Star Trek game. I think it was like Shattered Alliance or something. I don't remember what it was. But it looks pretty cool. So we may have a Star Trek total conversion for this day one release. How awesome is that? Like, talk about... Uh-oh. She's turned into her port side. That means that she's lost her forward weapons. Uh, she's taking damage. Let's see if we can pull you back. Kick on your engines. Uh, it looks like shields are still holding on some of the ships, at least. Let's go ahead and recharge you. It's their close range capability. I'm not ready to fight these guys. I've done a lot of damage, though. I think all my fighters are dead. Yeah, my fighters are dead. So, I wanted to show you guys, though, another, uh, another match using some different weapons. Last time I think I was using all missiles. Now we're using, like, look at the heavy armor on this thing. I've really armored the crap out of these. Now, I could have done... The customization of the ships is, I think, the funnest part. I could have done, um, like, more flak on here. To fight these guys, I probably want to do uh, heavier in the flak and then maybe some of the uh, the solar panel armor because it'll absorb some of the energy weapons that they were using. Don't ask me why they haven't been using I may win this. I may actually win this. These energy weapons, yeah. This is what I'm concerned about. Our shields are holding, but not for long. Ah, uh, yep, shields are starting to fail. Come on, guys. Full firepower right here. What do you got left? You still got a railgun online. Good for you. What do you got? Still got a railgun online. Nice. Keep firing. You can make these standoff fleets. What I think would be a good move for me is to make another uh, class of ship that's faster on its feet, can get in and keep the enemy busy while the big cannons keep firing, keep putting rounds down range. Oh, we're gonna lose. Oh, we almost lost that subsystem. But there are energy weapons. There are photon torpedoes that you can research into. Um, I haven't unlocked them yet because I don't want. I want to experience all the weapons and experience and, and experiment with them in the campaign. So I haven't been playing too much of the uh, the fast battles, which you can get access to everything really quickly to just get into skirmish mode. Seriously, did we lose the main cannons? No, we haven't lost the main cannons. Why have you turned? Not broadside. Forward firing. Are you out of power? No, all your subsystems are online. You're out of ammunition. What? The flat cannons burn through all our mass ammo. Damn. So all we've got is the laser cannons. The uh, the dual laser cannons on the side, I think were a really good choice. I think that's what kept us alive. I'm pretty sure we just won. We just won that. Holy crap. We were outnumbered, what, three to one? That shows you the um, the difference in, in fleet design. 
And commanding works just as well. Like if you have a, a weaker ship design, you could still win if you've got you know, a tactical mind about you. How you hit them, from what side you hit them, because how the ships are designed, they have firing arcs. Um, maybe try to take out, oh, we've got another one. Let's do an auto fight and see what happens. We won. Okay, take that out. And then go ahead and report to the nearest planet for uh, for repairs. You'll notice that we've taken some serious damage. We've also got to refill our ammunition. Hasn't refilled. It's not instant. I really like that. There are supply lines. You could blockade planets so enemy fleets can't resupply. There is fuel. Getting certain you know distance outside of your 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 empire, you'll start actually using fuel. So you can't like take a fleet behind your enemy, take out his homeworld. Unless you, you you plan it out and you build fuel stations that lead that direction to flank them. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. So, but uh, yeah, I'm going to put in the end of this video. I'm going to put in a little bit of clips of the um, of the modded uh, Galaxy class. Actually, better yet, I'll just put a link in the description below. Click that link. It'll go over to the developer's YouTube channel. And you can check out the Galaxy class in this game uh, fighting. And I'm looking forward to a Star Wars mod. I'm looking forward to a Battlestar mod. Like, there's a lot of cool stuff. Star Wars particularly, because of how the factions work and how this galactic map is, like, represented with borders and uh, areas like this and how the AI works, I think it'll be really, really good. Star Trek and Star Wars, I think, be the two perfect ones. I want to fight as the Empire or as the Rebellion against the Empire, you know? The, ugh. Star Destroyers. They have the fighters. Replace all those fighters with ties. And a lot of the weapons are already there. And the ship customization. Hell, just implementing the ships into the game and allowing me to make my own faction against the races that are already here will be a lot of fun. So expect a let's play of this. Uh, I've been enjoying it quite quite a bit, especially for such a small team putting this together. I love the art style. I love the game mechanics. Um, and I love to see where it goes as he continues to patch and update it And because the series is getting better and better. Star Drift 1 wasn't bad. Uh, I think there was a lot of great lessons learned in that one from the developer, and then Star Drive 2, just loads of improvements uh, and doing some really interesting things with it. So hopefully we get another Star Drive. We get Star Drive 3, and it'll be like this with multiplayer and new game mechanics and better ground combat, and who knows? Who knows what the future holds, but I hope there's many, many more of these. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more gaming goodness, and as always, thank you guys for watching. If you have a mod you'd like me to take a look at to spotlight uh, for any game, Sci-fi seems to be my thing, but uh, for any game, let me know in the comments below. I would love to take a look at it. I'm always looking for new stuff to play and spotlight. All right, guys, I will see you next time.